Lord have mercy on our souls, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the judge and the jury of court. The panel, we stand before you to talk about this crime that we witnessed here on, uh, was it August the 29th? Yeah. <laughs> it's always a crime with Matisse. It's always a crime scene. <laughs> August the 30th, let me check my date. There's never peace in the There's land of this peace, land. The, the amount of criminal activity this kid's done. <laughs> you make Peckham look good. <laughs> Sorry, it's August the 30th. Sorry, guys. It's London. We witness a lot, so we have to get our dates right. Ah, it's August the 31st. Oh, you no, mean no, yesterday. But the, the crime the, took the, place. The time of the trial. Yeah, the time yeah, of the crime. Yeah, it took, took yeah, place yeah, on the 30th. Really me, me and Eunice, we live in London, so we witness so much crime. We were literally just understand last week it's ridiculous um so yeah okay welcome back um i'm your host to do the most and never coast in a dressing gown with sunglasses on um eunice how you talking how you, how you feeling i would be in the same settings as you um you know th this is how we grieve in london it's we do this we hibernate with our not to be seen mode. and sports <laughs> direct <laughs> post mike ashley we don't give money to mike ashley <laughs> Um, yeah, man, I'm I'm good. I'm, I'm healthy. I'm happy. Things are nice. Um, life is good. And then Chelsea happens, and we all get brought down. So, yeah, and we're gonna dive into what the hell went down yesterday. And you know what? I have to be honest here. Yeah, this isn't new. No. We've seen this film many times. <laughs> I feel like we, you know, I feel like this is becoming a, you, you know, you know, them sequels that you just get sick of, you know, like when a film is on like the ninth sequel and you're like, yo, just end it. What are you doing? Fast and Furious. Fast, just and, make furious. Money Fast and Furious. Basically, yeah. Like Fast and Furious is no longer about cars. It's lost <laughs> its originality. Yeah. Now it's like jumping off cliffs and earthquakes and shit. Like we don't need to see that. It's the same thing with Chelsea now. We've seen this film before, so yeah, it's uh, it's getting mad. Yeah, I mean, Misbro, how how are you? How was dinner? <laughs> dinner was good with the family. The the brightest <laughs> brightest moment of the day. Um... Oh, you woke up to that madness, didn't you? Yeah, bro, he well, always does. I woke up, <laughs> oh, yeah, I always do. I woke up at uh, three thirty a.m. No, 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 no. You should no, get no, a no, refund. No. I'll be going back to bed. <laughs> and and you know what the crazy part is, boys? <laughs> I've seen this as as Eunice said so many times, and yet I keep waking up at three thirty a.m. <laughs> to feel pain, torture. <laughs> it's it's like it's it's like I haven't learned my lesson, and I don't think I ever will. But look, man. Um, yeah, it's gonna be an interesting conversation. So yeah, yeah. Let's go with it, bro. Where do we start? I mean, um, before kickoff, there was breaking news, and I was recording London Club's Carnage, which is premiering as we speak, and uh, I couldn't quite believe what I was witnessing with Fabrizio. I thought he had a um, a moment. You know, I thought we needed to call nine nine nine. I thought he he had been hacked anything other than the truth which was that we bid 90 million euros for another center back as as great as this guy is potentially in all these things Tuchel obviously yeah. has a fetish for center backs and that's that's how he gets off and, and 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 that's fine you know i don't judge anyone just to start i don't judge anybody um you know we all have our own kinks but this is just fucking crazy now okay um another center back <laughs> <laughs> after Fafana and Kulabali and Kukurea, by the way, who can play in this position, um, we were told. And then Colwell is also out on loan, and I do still expect him to do big things. And uh, we're getting another centre back, but that, that's that's all cool. If you have, or if you even are aware of the midfield issues, but currently doesn't seem like you are. You're surprised at the midfield issues, but I want to preface this is too cool in. Um, or at least for me, I'll let the boys give their verdict soon. I know social media is starting to have heart attacks and they're starting to say, wow, you're not Tuchel out yet. We're doing that again. I'm Tuchel in, firmly Tuchel in. I think he's done so much. So I want to say this off to start just in case we get clipped by minerals. We need vitamins, not minerals now. No water. Hand out the water, if anything, for some of those guys on the bench. You have to sit there and hand out the juices. Um, give the other guys some minerals, maybe on the, on the starting 11. Um, 
I'm going to preface. I want to start. We're too caught in, or I am so too caught in. I appreciate everything he's done over the past, especially past year. Champions League is, is great, but the hard times are where we stick together as family. Do you know? Sanctions, wife, Lukaku, the bastard, still an issue in my in my side. Um, not just because he's left now. Oh, he wasn't really the issue, Matisse, was he? No, he was. You can have two problems. If your house is on fire and your car's been stolen, you have two issues, people. You don't have one. You have two issues. The car got fixed or we found the car and the house is still on fire. Um, so I appreciate all of that. And now it's about him going for a struggle. We went for a struggle as a club. He brought us out of it. Now he's going for a struggle. And I'm hoping we can stick by him whilst also analysing and understanding that he needs to be better. And hopefully he also sees that and he also improves as well as the team. Um, but yeah, just insanity. Um, so I don't even know where I want to start, Eunice. I'm, I'm so discombobulated right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I feel you because we said this before going on, before coming on. Um, it's not just one issue. There's multiple things happening. Um, you could argue there's multiple things happening on the pitch, tactically, mentally, off the pitch. There's a whole wide range of issues. And we didn't, I don't think at the start of this season, we actually understood just how deep things actually were because we could see preseason wasn't right. All of us were talking about how preseason was not good and it was something was off. And I started talking about things like body language, something doesn't feel quite on the on, on the button. It's just it just feels a little sideways, feels a little left, right? But it's preseason, and you think it's all right. You know, it doesn't matter. Well, it does matter, but it's not the end of the world. You have teams that start preseason, they do amazing, then the season starts and they capitulate. You have teams that have a crap preseason in terms of results. With us, it wasn't just results. There were other things that weren't good, but you have a bad preseason in terms of results, and then you start the season and you're flying. So we're like, okay, give the benefit of the doubt. Season will start. We'll see where it goes. It, 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 as game by game goes by, it all starts to make sense as to what the whole situation actually is and the clarity of it is starting to show. And now we're actually starting to realize, yeah, this, this, this squad, this team, and uh, albeit um, I'm Tuchel in as well. Let's just have it right. I, I want to put this out there first, right? It's okay to criticize someone and still want them in the job. Yeah, it happens at every day at workplaces, by the way. Like when people... <laughs> so let's talk about it, right? Because some people think that you can't do this and I'm going to teach you nah. because you need to learn. If somebody's performing in a job and you're reviewing them for the month and you have some critiques and some things that you don't like, but you still really like them overall and you still want them to do well. You still... In fact, you care so much that you have the energy to critique because you see if I didn't care I would just go through the motions and be like I don't really care I'll just get rid of you on the spot I don't really Bye. care about the midfield imbalance I don't really care about you know anything because yeah. you're leaving anyway <laughs> but because I care I stress myself out about it and I talk about it and I wear my sunglasses and my dressing gown and I drink my, my tea and I get a couple hours sleep because I can't stop tossing and turning thinking about them them goals conceded and, and dribbles passed from Jorginho and 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 all these things. So when you when you really care, you you critique. When you really care about your friends or your loved ones and they fuck up, you you tell them. You don't just let them keep doing it. Or if you feel like they have messed up, you you, you say it. Or if you've got an opinion on something that they've done that hurts you, you say it. So this is this is life. But carry on, Eunice. I just think some people just don't get that. They just they just think we should just just say fuck it. Just well, exactly. Like <laughs> there's, 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 a, there's a lot of people, and it's 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 a bit mad. And I'm, I I think it's the minority. If I'm being real, that there is a silent majority that don't actually impose what they really actually think. And then you know the ones that are loudest are the minority that tend to be like, oh my god, oh no, okay, no, we're gonna criticize Tuchel. What he's out, Tuchel out. Like no, that's not how it works. Um, there are things that he's got wrong too. Aside from the players and what's going on and the body language, and now we're hearing things about what's going on within the camp and all of that, and it's it's looking a bit mad. But Tuchel has portion to blame too. It's everyone. So 
when you start to look from preseason all the way forward, and some would say even at the latter stage of last season when we just about got away with it, with top four, now it's all starting to make sense. Game by game, you start to get more and more clarity. And we're starting to realise just how much surgery this squad and this club actually needs. And what we've gone through, and now we've got a new owner without a director of football, with all these things that have happened, it's looking a bit mad. It's looking a bit mad because we all have an idea of what the solution might be. And I think there's one key indicator as to what one big solution would be. And we know that's getting the midfielder in this transfer market, which I don't think we're going to get. And that scares me because now I'm thinking if this transfer window ends after deadline day tomorrow and we don't get what we need, we might see the same results. And on top of that, the problems are already existing away from the transfer market, within the squad, within some of these players, and Tuchel. I'm worried. I'm worried now. So, yeah. It's, it's, it's kind of therapeutic in a way that we can go back to preseason where we spoke about the performances and the lack of clarity on what we're trying to do. And, and just, obviously, we were still taking out a lot of the players that we don't rate. And and even, you know, preseason where we, we left some players behind that want to be here and we took some players that don't want to be here. Um, yeah. And before I go to you, Miz, I just feel if there's one thing, if there's two things, one is a Jorginho alternative for the season in, a, in as a sitter, whether it's existing or outside we buy one but it seems unlikely so then you have to take a look at Trevor Chaloba because it seems like Ampadu's leaving and I think I've just seen that he is going so that hurts my soul um, because I do feel like he would have been an alternative and I've said that all summer w whether he's the quality needed that's obviously he has to show that if he was given the chance but he did turn up to pre-season he did give you those quotes of I'm willing to do anything for the team I'm willing to play anywhere he is a senior he has played for Wales he is not a child he has played senior football at the top level in the top five league twice. I do feel like that Tuchel is a little bit nervous um, to play some of these guys. And that's fair, you know. Well, he's even Ampadu has already gone off to Italy today. Yeah, I think, so he, he, it's not like as if, you know, people say, yeah. oh, he's got a youth. He doesn't like the youth. It's bullshit. He's played Trevor Chalobo. He's played Mount. He's played James. All, those two are already existing. So Trevor's more. He's, he's given chances to Gallagher. So he's not got a youth agenda. But I do feel like he... He needs like a really massive, great, successful loan before he really pays attention to you. And I feel like, understandably, that is the case. But also at the same time, you can have a, I think you can have a bad loan due to factors out of your control and other circumstances. And you look at the team he's gone to, and that doesn't write you off coming to Chelsea. And I don't feel like, I don't feel like Ampadu and Gilmore are that bad that you can't get anything out of them. And and even at this point now, I'd be looking at Harvey Vale as well. You know, you played him in that cup game last season. He played well. Um, I see players like Harvey Elliott for Liverpool stepping up. I've seen Tarek Lamptey make his debut away to Arsenal and have a great game. I'm not saying that these guys are the solution and they are 100% going to deliver. That is the unknown. You sign Chukomenko, use him. Give him a go. Like, we can't get any worse. We're already screwed and you're playing players that don't want to be here pull a six heads all over the place and then obviously you, you you come out with the quotes about you know not everybody wants to be here the commitment da, da, da. I understand that it's true but then don't play them then don't use them like use the guys that want to be here that 100% when they come onto that pitch they are ready to die for you they're ready to put everything out there and they want to prove themselves they might surprise you they might surprise you Harvey Vale could come on with his creativity and his and his nous and he could come on and create something out of nothing and give you an assist and you just sit there and like whoa this kid he's actually good and that could that could be a spiral for things to come we finished top four with a bunch of kids under Lampard in the first season we had not just one surprise we had about four or five so we got good players man but if we just take out some of these other guys as well then you never know but Miz go for it bro um, I'm going to try and systematically break this down right first of all the whole Thomas Tuchel out thing it's insane to think you want him out now like Todd Bowley's just invested how much Raheem Sterling Koulibaly and more Wesley Fofana yeah uh, Kukurea and like 
it's th this is a non-discussion. He ain't going anywhere. Thomas Tuchel ain't getting sacked now. And unless if it were Roman, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Maybe, maybe. And, and do you know what? To a certain degree, I don't want. I don't. I don't want that kind of situation anymore. Mm -hmm. Like, yes, yeah. that gave us trophies and whatnot. Of course, I, I love it. But but this attitude within the fan base of sacking and hiring, we, we've got to stop. We've, we've got to actually tackle the issue. And if you're sitting there and thinking Thomas Tuchel is the biggest issue, so there's little issues, but he is the biggest issue, you couldn't have got it more incorrect than that. Like that is the real truth. You're not going to invest all that money. Todd Bowley is not in a situation where Todd Bowley actually – really trust this guy like he's got high praise about him he's about to give him a contract extension just a couple of weeks ago we were talking about thomas Sewell getting two-year contract extension on top of the year that he's got left he's not going to get sacked and i don't want him to get sacked none of us wants him to get sacked we want him to figure out ways to do things so that's one thing yeah two the next part in that systematic breakdown is look at the players he's brought in right He's brought in Sterling. He's brought in Kukurel. He's brought in Koulibaly. Has any of those brothers been bad? Besides that Koulibaly snap reaction against Leeds, mm. has any of those three players been poor so far that they've featured? Probably you would categorically say they're probably the standouts? Mm. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So what have we established here? Let's give him some more of his signings so so that he can truly imprint his vision in this team. Mm -hmm. Whereas if Avana's coming in, hopefully we won't see too many games where Aspilicueta has to play in the back three or even as a makeshift back four, whatever, right back. We can start seeing another player come through. Hopefully we get some forward players. There's some news coming up right now that Abba Mayang, I didn't know this was actually true but now it is looks like yeah. he, he got robbed recently and he broke his like they broke his, broke jaw. his jaw yeah so he's he's actually out for for a while so i don't know whether other meang will happen now because no, we won't. need players to come in apparently away. apparently it doesn't impact the deal but he's going to be out for weeks so see i, I can't have that no i can't, no, even I, gonna, I can't uh, have yeah. a player a player that's not going to be coming in and he's going to be away for weeks like i cannot have that i need players coming in immediately um, to sort things out, right? So that's one thing. So, so maybe, maybe, about... maybe it's a suit. I'm kidding. You, you never know. You never know. <laughs> At this moment, who else? Be... Zaha it seems like has to happen. So anyway, but that, that that's that's by yeah. the by, right? So Tuku in players he's brought in has done well. Third one is, as Matisse touched on a little bit, there's still some players lingering on whether they don't know their future, whether it's in Chelsea, whether it's not in Chelsea. We've done very well getting rid of a whole heap of players, but there's still few players that need to go. And I don't think it harnesses or harbors a good environment when you've got few players still within the group that still doesn't know where they're going to be. That's the yep. other thing. Now, in regards to the fourth factor. Now, the fourth factor, I feel like it's broken down into many different areas, right? First of all, Matisse and, and both Eunice heavily talk about the midfield issue. No doubt. No doubt there is midfield issue. It, it's clear as daylight. We knew that, though. We knew that. As, as Eunice's video, ladies and gentlemen, if you guys watched his video, he always says, Jorginho's flaws are not new to us. We know that. We know that. I know going into the game what that brother can do and what he can't do. So me, being a teammate or a manager, I should, I should know how to have a team set up that accommodates for his strengths and, and make sure there's, the flaws are not, are not exposed as much. So what happens in the last few matches? Conor Gallagher can't, can't match up in that area. Ruben Loftus-Cheek today as well. Just leaving too much space between yourself and Jorginho, mate. And and Ruben as well in midfield. What, what did you do? Let's talk about you. What did you do? You did, you were a ghost for me in that midfield. Every, everybody was great in the first 20 minutes. And then... And, and, 
And I'll get to why we were great in the first 20 minutes. That's the most interest, interesting part because I had a really good conversation with Ryan. But midfield, we know. And I'm not taking anything away from Jorginho. Jorginho has flaws. Do we need to get an upgrade? Hell, we do. Hell, we do. I don't want to see my, my DM getting run past and, and getting thrown around like a rag doll. I don't want to see that. But we've also seen Jorginho do well in matches. Let's not pretend that we've not seen Jorginho perform well. We've seen that as well. We need to ask questions as to why is he getting in those areas where it's 1v1 against Jorginho or 2v1 against... Why is that situation occurring? Yeah. Now, let me explain why that might be occurring. So that midfield, we've talked about that. It's, it's an issue, right? We need players in. Jorginho is probably not the solution for long-term X, Y, Z. Up front, and once again, the boys have touched on this. Today, I don't know if you guys know this, guys, the stat. Sterling, Mount, Havertz, Ziyech combined lost the ball 65 times. Combined. Mason Mount lost 20 times. Kai Havertz, 11. Sterling, 17. And I think Ziyech, something as well. Now, you tell me. Finally, that's being addressed. Now, now, now you tell me. Let's for, let's, for the entertainment purpose, remove Jorginho and let's put our fan favorite Declan Rice in here. Okay? <laughs> we all want Declan Rice. Right? I'm, just, I'm, I'm, I'm just creating a picture. Uh, uh, let's get Declan Rice. Let's get Declan Rice. We get Declan Rice there. How does Declan Rice solve the situation of 65 loss of possession up front from the attackers. What Declan Rice can do, perhaps, is when Mason Mann loses the ball or when Havertz loses the ball, in critical areas, Declan Rice can maybe cover for that at times. Not always, because the opposition are not stupid. And if you think Declan Rice saves every counter transition for West Ham, and let's have it right, West Ham are probably in the same level as us at the moment in terms of form. If you think not a single body goes past Declan Rice, please have a watch, have a, like, watch West Ham games. But I will give it to you. He will stop certain counter transitions that Jorginho cannot. But the point here is not that. The point is Declan Rice coming in doesn't mean Mount's not going to lose possession. Havertz is not going to lose possession. Sterling is not going to lose possession. Ziyech is not going to lose possession. That's one thing. Declan Rice coming in doesn't mean when Havertz has a clear header, no pressure, nice cross coming in, and he doesn't even hit the target. In fact, he hits it over the bar. Declan Rice is not solving that. Agreed. Declan Rice coming in, or any other brother, I'm just using Declan Rice because you guys all love Declan Rice, right? Let's use Ruben Neves for a second, all right? Since you guys might start saying, oh, Ms. hates Declan Rice. Let's use Ruben Neves, right? Ruben Neves comes in as a DM. And he lays the ball to Mason Mount. All have it. And they're now 1v1 with the defender. And they're incapable of taking that defender on. And what they opt to do is pass it back. A DM ain't going to solve that. Basically, the message I'm trying to give here, as Eunice said, is a bigger issue than just getting a DM. You're having one if you think, get a DM and voila, we are Premier League champions. <laughs> no. That, 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 no. Simple no. So there's a lot of things. Now getting back to that Southampton stuff before I finish things off and give it to the boys. Do you know why for the first 25 minutes we were looking good? Southampton for the first 25 minutes. And, and you guys will realize this now that we're going to play, play it back, right? You'll notice there was a lot of attack from our left side. So Kukurea, Havertz, Mason, Mount were finding a lot of pockets of space. And Sterling was getting into that central area. And that's how we ended up scoring the goal as well. But the goal was threatening well before all of those movements were happening. But a lot of the movement was predominantly happening on the left side. Southampton for the first 20 to 20 minutes. They didn't man-mark us. So what happened was we played a lot of our balls through, through the left, and you would have noticed Aspie stayed back as a 
creating to get thir three at the back as opposed to traditional, you know, him bombing up as well. He created a third, which allowed for Kukurea to be a little bit more advanced, which then created a bit of an uh, overload on the left side. Mount and Havertz were outnumbering a couple of the Southampton players. And that's why we were finding those space. And that's why we were getting those joy. We ended up scoring. What clicked for Southampton was, hold on a second. Why are we allowing them to play like that? Let's man mark each MFs out there. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to, Press Kukurea, we're going to have a man on mount and we're going to have a man on habit and let Aspie do whatever he wants to do. And all of a sudden we started seeing Aspie being further up on that right side, but they weren't bothered about that because they know that ain't an issue for us. That brother don't have legs. We, we can handle him, right? Mm. So then what happens is you guys always say, oh, but Miz, what about Thomas Tuka and his tactics? Not everything can be won by tactics. Sometimes players need to show their individual qualities to get past. This is what Eden Hazard used to do. This is what some of the greats of this world, they do. So what happened was when we got pressured 1v1 is now Kukurea has to pass it to Man and Man's got a player right on him. What's Man got to do? He's got to be able to wriggle away from that person so that he can create that that overload again and, and allow for habits to be free, but he couldn't do that. Doesn't have the ability. To he do can't do that. He doesn't have it in him. And it's yeah. not just Mount. Habits yeah. then gets the ball. Habits can't do it either. Do you know who is the only one that can do it? Sterling. Yeah. And it's not a surprise Sterling's got three goals for Chelsea Football Club already out of all the forwards. And he looks the, like the only forward attacking player that can score goals for us. Mount doesn't look like he can score. Habits, you can have an open goal and he'll still kick it over. And this, oh. ladies and gentlemen, is the issue. Magnitude of problems. Now, you can sit there and go, get Thomas Tuchel out. But you think the new manager is going to come in? What if they come in and they go, I don't like Kukura? Well, we just bought him. <laughs> I don't like Sterling. <laughs> yeah. I don't like Koulibaly. He's too old for me. There, there's, a one, there's a one extension to add to your last point there that I want to say with Sterling. Being able to have the ability to get, you know, creative enough to get past a defender that's man-marking him and to find the space himself. And he did actually at times do that in the second half when we looked blank. But what happened? This is exactly what we said when he came in. No we options. have players that okay. might bring his level down because he gets past a man and how many times does Sterling end up losing the ball in that second half? It's no coincidence because there was no option for him to get to. He then therefore has way too much time on the ball. He gets pressed, he loses the ball. There was times there where he would get past his man, get into the box or near the box. Where's the option? Mount's not losing his marker. Habert's not losing. Well, Habert's already come off. Um, but Everyone's not losing their marker. And he's hesitating, hesitating. Who, who? Okay, try and go back. All right, now I've got two men. Lost the ball. It's, it's not helping anyone. And as you've said, that is a big marker. It's not just a DM. It's the positions in front as well that have to be addressed. But this is my thing. We're not going to solve all that by tomorrow, are no. we? I'd love to think we could. We're not going to. I don't even think we're going to get one player in those positions that we've just spoken about and that's what scares me because where's the solution within the team i don't know who it's going to be i think it's is is what matisse said maybe maybe thomas Tuchel once the window completely closes you'll have to make a tough decision and start looking in the academy you'll have to Got start looking at harvey vale he's got to start looking at Billy Gilmore. Um, He's got to start Gilmore. looking at all these players. You have well, to. Billy, Billy, sure, Billy's a big one. Was on the bench yesterday. Definitely yeah. an option. Now has yeah. a squad number. Brings on four of those guys in the second half where we... I, I don't know about you guys. I don't. I didn't know what we were playing. When he brought on Chilwell, um, Pulisic... Second, second half was a blur for me anyway. But, but I'm oh. looking at this. Kovacic is a single six. I'm like... And then everyone... At, Mount Ziesch and then Broyer Sterling and fair play to Broyer. He actually done all right, I would say, considering the, the circumstances. Actually, but, actually, he did. Yeah, yeah. 
I'm just like, th th there's, there's not even zero chemistry here. It's like, it goes into the minuses at this point. It's not minus 50, mm -hmm. you know? I didn't know what we were trying to do. And that's where I'm thinking, okay, well, why are we not actually trying to bring on a Gilmore then if we're that desperate in midfield? Or where is the solution going to come from? Do we have the solution in this squad? And I'm getting the impression, I don't know about you guys, that yesterday Thomas Tuchel in that second half was just thinking, I don't know what to do. Yeah. Do you know what, Yunus? I hundred percent agree. He he in that second half when when it was two one and we're chasing and we look so clueless, he also probably felt, I don't know. I'm looking at the bench, I don't know what else I can do now because <laughs> Yunus, this brother used to have Osman Dembele in his team once upon a time, like Jermaine. He used to have engineers, architects like Marco Roos in his team. He used to have Aubameyang in his team. He used to have in PSG, Neymar. He used to have, like, he didn't need to tell people how to play football. <laughs> now he's having to tell players, can I teach, let me tell you how to kick the ball, kick it sideways, kick it like. But, but, di but this is where, this is where as a coach, his weakness, all right? We have to admit, this is, this, yeah. is, this is a weakness because when I watch Sarri ball, this fan base will kill me. But there were clear circuits, clear, clear methodical patterns as to how we move through the pitch. And he can, he's, he's shown he can do that with great players and he can do that with average players for anybody who watched their recent win. Um, and he, you know, there's so many times where you just want to see consistent consistent movement through the pitch. And, and it seems like everything is so disjointed and nobody knows what their next move is, what their next pass is. Um, and it's like, if we didn't come up against a, a good team. Southampton are going to be relegation strugglers. Yeah. They don't they don't have technically out-of-this-world players. They're not they still, good. But they still beat us. And yeah. it feels like all it takes really right now is a little bit of PNP to beat us. That's all it takes. Some somebody who can run, who's strong, and that's it. And and a few transitions, and we're screwed. And it's nuts. It's it's in, it's absolutely insane. But we we in in the games against Leeds, in the game in this game at Southampton that we've lost, and convincingly because Southampton it looked comfortable, and I knew watching the second half um, that we weren't going to win this game. <laughs> you know, when you're two one down, you're just watching. You're just like, we ain't we ain't we ain't getting back into this one. Yeah. There's, there's just yeah. no no way we're getting back into this. Do you know what, no Matisse, way. just to just to counter that, I hear what you said about Sari, and I love Sari as well. You, you know, me, you and me, we were we were we were pro Sari. We wanted him to stay. I think we need to appreciate the fact that managers are different. Yeah, Sari is yeah. different. Tuchel's yeah. different. Pep's different. Bielsa's different. Everyone's different, right? The 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 thing about Tuchel and you guys, he's very transparent. He said it, and you'll notice. Our build-up, when you don't get a shocker from Mendy, our build-up is generally spot on. If, if you notice, there's several times where we build up and we nicely get out of our defensive half and we get into the final third. Our issues begin from the final third. We don't know what to do. But Tuchel has said, boys, I don't train players in the final. That's where I leave it to them, to their creativeness, their their vision their imagination yeah. kicks in i don't train that now you can sit here and say you know what sack to cool. he doesn't train that sack him because other managers do but this is what you're gonna get different people different philosophies different ideologies to cool pep pep's another one it's not like pep sits there pep also teaches them how to play out from the back and then you'll notice it's those technicalities those engineers you think Ted, Pep Pep tells KDB how to put those passes? You think Pep actually trains him that? That's KDB KDB's uh, um, imagination. That's his vision. Do you really think he sits with Bernardo Silva and tells him how to find those intricate passes? No. Haven't you guys heard Mourinho say, "I don't teach footballers to how to play football." I, yeah. I I get them to play how to play my football. I don't. I'm I'm not bringing in Tammy to 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 teach him how to now kick a ball. Tammy should know that. I'm gonna teach Tammy how to play my football, Jose Mourinho football. Yep. 
One of the biggest flaws for Thomas Tuchel right now is he gets everything done and and you guys would have seen it. How good do we look from, from our half to bring it to the final third and then everything just collapses? Hmm. There is also an element of some teams now, I think, almost allowing us to... I think in, 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 in an aspect, I don't want to say, well, maybe it is. Maybe figured out exactly what we're trying to do and know that we don't have... <laughs> ironic we don't have the minerals so it's funny that if um if we're playing out of the back now there's teams that will go yeah no come and bring it we'll let you go on. it's fine get to the final third and see what happens and they're all just there waiting as you said they mind they mark man for man or they have enough bodies in the box they know we're man not potent on. and now what do we do you know, like build-ups great possession 75 percent, fantastic but as we've seen today's stat with um it's ironic with Kai and Mason, 777 minutes combined, no goals, no assists, nothing. It's, By it's the way, DM will, we'll know that. That. DM will solve that, but a DM will solve that. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? If, Look, this, team, if this team's not hard to beat, this team is nothing. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's, it's a lot deeper, boys, man. It really is a lot deeper. That's why I, I actually, I saw both of you guys with your videos and you guys were obviously spot on. I had a different spin. I actually said in my video, I'm convinced after watching that match against Southampton that give Thomas Tuchel the caliber of players he needs, we won't be in this issue anymore. I'm, 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 I'm convinced. I am actually convinced. Because mm. the three players so far for him that's come in, they've done well. Mm. Give me three more. Give me three more. And watch him at least keep us in top four and then hopefully transfer windows from there on he can add a few more in i'm convinced I, because some of these players are not up to it i'd hope it's not just defenders though <laughs> that's the that's the yeah. thing and you know um with the problems not being addressed as we've already as we've already said we also now know that away from the pitch off field right there are things happening players aren't happy certain players that were even on the pitch yesterday we saw what Pulisic did. We saw Ziyech was meant to go. Now apparently he's not. It's 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 it, you can't have players like that just lingering about, especially someone like a Pulisic who has made it public. I want I want to go. See you later. He was he was dreadful. He was out of and, position, but he was he was poor. And that too, exactly. Yeah, and he's used out of position, and he's only going to get more frustrated because of that. And he doesn't have a way out. He's going to have to stick around. It's going to be hell. So. He came, that on, he came on angry. Yeah. He did. And he left even more angry. And, mm. you know, going down the tunnel didn't say anything to the fans and whatnot. That's peed a lot of people off. Um, but as people that sympathize with him, it just it creates toxicity. And you know what happens in the Chelsea room when there's toxicity? It, it's chaos. It's chaos. It is. It's chaos. And at that point, you ain't winning games. Screw it. Forget tactics and forget everything on the pit. You need to solve the dressing room first and solve this issue first. And if you have players lingering about that literally do not want to be here on top of the ones that didn't and have already left and that's cool but the ones that are still here that want to go and we can't find a solution and because of that we can't create room in the squad we can't bring in more players that want to come in or that we want to try and get in and on top of that the targets that we think we actually need we're not actually even going for instead we're trying to get a deal done for Guardiola for next year I, I it's 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 mad because you almost have a certainty as to what's coming at least in the next few games before the World Cup. And it's not going to be pretty. I think as well, like there were so many players we had to get rid of. It was borderline impossible task. It's I'm mad how much surgery, I'm, yeah. I'm going for our outgoings now. Barkley was released, thank God. Bakioko seems like he's going to have his contract terminated according to Demacio. Um, Hudson Odo was given his loan. You can argue he's still mentally on side with what Tupel was trying to do more so than Pulisic. Um, Christensen, Rudig obviously gone on free. Malang Sargon, Lukaku, Emerson, Werner, Alonso is on his way out. You know, it's it's a lot. Um, and then on top of that, Pulisic and Ziyech. It's that is like that's that's half a squad. Um, that's half it's a, a lot squad. of starters. There's a yeah. lot of starters. There. Batshuayi still to go as well. Um, it's a lot of players to get in and out in one window and it's borderline impossible. Um, and this is why I talk about the Ampadus and the Gilmores and the Vales. 
they're just not that bad where they can't come off the bench. I mean, I'm just thinking about their own confidence, right? You've already got players like Pulisic who are completely done with you and and they want to move and whatever. Ziyech, to be fair to him, was good in the first 25 minutes, as, as was everybody. Um, then then he kind of lost it. Mount in the second half lost it. Um, no composure, everything went tits up. I see Cole Palmer. I see Harvey Elliott. I see Tyrek Lamptey's debut against Arsenal. Are they? Are they? Are, is a Scottish international, Billy Gilmore? Is a Welsh international, Ampadu? Are they that bad that they can't come on? I know Ampadu's leaving now. Is Vale that bad? I don't think he is. I don't think he's that bad that he can't come on. Even you know, like because like I said, we're losing anyway, and we don't look like we're getting back into it, but. Not using that fifth sub and not bringing any of them on, that, that's going to hurt. That's going to sting. That, for them, that's them sitting there thinking, raw, we're not even good enough to come on. To like, yeah. we're, like, we're not even good. And these guys want to play for you. They want to play for you. They don't care about the system, the position. They, they want to play for you. And they want the chance to show you that they belong at Chelsea Football Club. And some of them have vast experience. And they're sitting there thinking... We can't even come on when the game's basically done anyway. We're not looking like we're going to score. We're getting that Lampard U-shape again where everybody goes into the box or Mason Mount's hanging out on the touchline, build-up plays going around the U-shape, cross the ball, head out, cross the ball, head out. Scary. And we're, we're not even going to use the last sub. We're like, you know what? <laughs> I ain't even going to bring... I ain't even, I'd rather bring nobody on than bring you lot in. That, that's going to sting, man. That's going to sting. So... Do you know what? Um, that's definitely a position I feel Thomas Tuchel's missed the trick, but we, we need to ask the question, why hasn't he used them? Why, yeah, it's true. Why, why aren't you using them? What is yep. it? Like, like, let's say us three, right? Let's say us three. We, we're the managers of Chelsea Football Club. Yeah? Us three other coaches, we're sitting there and we're watching these players train. If I see someone doing well, why am I not going to use them? That's the argument some people have, is are they even doing well in training? Because we'd like to think, yes, they're good. But See where I'm going though, right? You yeah. know, see where I'm going. Yeah. Like It's easy for us to sit here and go, and I, I completely agree with Matisse. It, they should have been used. It, it makes logical sense. Yeah. But the deeper question is, why haven't you used them? Because I would love to hear Thomas Tuchel's explanation. Is it is it is it in room politics? Are you worried that senior players might look at some of the junior players taking, you know, getting minutes ahead of them, and it would disrupt the dressing room? Is that one of the issues, or are you you don't actually trust them, or they don't train well enough? Maybe that's something we don't know. What is it? Because something's stopping you from starting them. Something's yeah. obviously stopping you because we are sitting here and saying, why aren't you using Ampadu? It makes sense. They can't be worse than what we're already using right now. Of but my, my, my question would be, is, is Pulisic training well? Can't be. Oh, exactly. <laughs> it's, it's impossible, right? Because there's no way Pulisic is, is doing the madness in training. There's no way. No. <laughs> so why, why is he coming off the bench? Maybe he position. is like, training. Maybe, maybe he is training well, but then come game time, he's like, you know what? And in the lead up to this fixture, and it's difficult because people want to see Mason dropped, and they want to see want Kai dropped. dropped. Yeah. And I think Kai can be dropped for Broya against West Ham, hundred percent. I think Broya can yeah. start. I think his impact was positive. Mount, who do you drop him for? You know, you can't. Who, that's the problem, isn't it? Who do you drop anyone. him for? You don't have an option unless you are going to be. So ballsy as to start Harvey Vell, but that's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. Ziyech's mind is elsewhere. Pulisic's mind is elsewhere. So we actually don't have any competition for those areas. And that's where maybe complacency can set in. Um, and it's it's a thing where it's like, even, even in my preview, I started Pulisic. I said, you know what? Me too. I, Me want, too. I, Me want, too. Mason, I want Mason Mount to sit there on the bench and I want him to, to know that he's not a guaranteed start. Start. I want to send yeah. I would want to send that message so I said right let's play Pulisic and I can't completely say that starting Pulisic would have been completely wrong because I would not have played him at right wing back and maybe if he had played in his natural position he would have played well I don't know but it's very clear that when Pulisic came on 
regardless of what position you're playing, his mind and his... He wasn't in it. He was vexed. He's yeah. vexed. He was vexed. He, he was vexed. He's, he's like he somebody. He's like somebody insulted his grandmother. Like he come on angry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he left angry, and he left quick. And I don't. I don't even really get angry about it. I. I think sometimes people want to deflect from the real issues and start talking about Pulisic not clapping the fans. Yes, maybe the away fans are pissed at that. I personally wouldn't care. I would have walked out anyway. As soon as the final whistle was blown, I'm not really looking for your claps. You've 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 had a shitty performance. All of you. I don't really care. <laughs> I agree. Um, yeah, I agree. Like, I agree you can, as well. You can you can, you can, you can come yeah. you can come and clap me all you want, but at the end of the I day, don't need you've just you've just put in a shoddy performance. I'm yeah, already yeah. pissed. Your clapping is not going to do nothing for me, my brother. I'm going mm-hmm. home. I, I got to get from Southampton all the way back up to London quickly. on a weekday. I don't have time. On a weekday. To, I don't have time for you to come clap. Go, go. You leave. I leave. We don't. We don't need to speak. It's like getting into an argument with your girl. I mean, we don't need to talk. Go. Imagine, you go. At, the end, imagine at the end of the argument, she goes, <laughs> and, and you go, oh, <laughs> yeah, that made it all better. Hmm. <laughs> no, no, no. Who's sleeping on the couch? Exactly. <laughs> Answer me that, and 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 we keep it moving to the next day. No, that's toxic. But yeah, so for me, it's like I don't, I don't care. I really don't care. So when people start talking about Pulisic, fifty minute cameo out of position, I'm like, I'm not saying Pulisic's good enough right now. I'm not saying that he should still be here. I think it's best for him to leave as well. But that's not yeah. Pulisic's fifteen minute cameo in the last two games. One playing with ten men and one playing out of position. That's not the root of the problem. And when people start talking about these other things. They're just diverting attention from their favourites and people that we need to talk about, like Mason Mount, like Kai Havertz, like Jorginho, right. because right. everybody's got their own different cults and their yep. own little allegiances and their own little fortnight little battles going on and reviving this guy. And I saw people tweet after when the goal went in, oh, Mason Mount gave the ball away and we conceded. That's that's not the full story. No. <laughs> that's not, we, we not the full story. We have enough time to recoup, but that's when the midfield imbalance comes into play. Completely, mm. yeah. Yeah. No, not disregarding the fact that Mason lost in a very critical position, like that, that just left Jorginho all exposed. I don't right? even think it was critical. If I'm, if I'm to be completely honest, if it was, I would say. But I think Ruben's there as well. We had like eight men back. Both well, of probably them. Probably right. Maybe, Jorginho maybe and wasn't Ruben. Even, Everybody was back. Wasn't even. It was yeah, only about was... and Kai up there. It couldn't be more yeah. safe. <laughs> yeah, maybe it wasn't so critical. But the fact is, you losing the ball in that area, those two brothers are not are not ready. They're not anticipating. This is. This is the other concept that I want to share with you guys, right? I don't know. I, I saw this documentary of Pep the other day, right? Yeah. A while back, uh, this was many, maybe when he was in Barcelona. And he was saying to this journalist that he goes, not only I, I, I want the players to want the ball, but I want them to anticipate when they lose the ball. Mm-hmm. You need to anticipate that any moment... It could be a missed time pass, or you could actually lose the ball, like being taken away from you. So he goes on to talk about the structure of the team it has to be in a manner where, yes, you you stay compact so you can have those passes and, and open up the opposition. But at the same time, if any of those passes are wrong, that your winger is not too wide so that they can't collapse back in, that your defenders are not too deep, that they can't close... I loved how deep this guy was thinking that he even thinks about when you're with possession, boys, if I lose the ball, how quickly can I get it back? And what is the shape going to be? I don't think our in Chelsea Football Club, I don't think some of our players think like that. No. When we are with the ball, we act like we can never lose this ball. It will never happen. And then boom, transition. And all of a sudden it's 3v2. And you go... Why didn't you see that coming? How many times, boys, have we seen we having a corner kick? We. It's an attacking corner kick. And we look like we're in threat. <laughs> why am I in threat? This is Our, my our corner, corner kicks are a moment to expose us. <laughs> why, why do I look like I'm in threat? Like the Opposition's licking their lips. Like, yep, send that ball in. You're <laughs> going to get ripped up now. I'm thinking this is mad. That was it's like the mad. end yesterday with with when Mendy came up, and I'm thinking we're gonna concede it. <laughs> at that, at that <laughs> point, I stopped caring. I'm not gonna lie. I didn't, go. I didn't even care anymore. Go. I didn't even care anymore. I was like, do what you want. Go, I didn't go, know go, go, go play out front, Mendy, if you want. Player. I was like, who's this orange player? <laughs> now I see it's Mendy. I'm going, Mendy, bro. Your your ball playing ability is bad. <laughs> what are you doing? 
I could understand if you're Edison. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? You could probably pull off a shot, but honestly, like we, we've 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 got a lot of work to do, man. But that was well said, Matisse. There, you said some of the favorites. Stop worrying about favorites. You know, you know who's my favorite? Okay. You guys know very well, Hakim Ziyech. And you know how shit oh. he played yesterday? <laughs> Rubbish. Yeah. Rubbish. Yeah. Do you think I care? I love the guy. I love the guy. I wish him the best. But you know what? I'm not shy enough to say that he was pathetic. There was a couple of chances he had inside the box and he fluffed it with his left foot. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's you fluff with it, your left foot, your strongest foot. It's actually quite shocking how, going back to that point, we've seen the demise of Kai and Mason and these lads, you know, over game after game after game after game. And then Pulisic shows up yesterday. And post-match, it's all about Pulisic. You go on socials, yeah, it was all good. about Pulisic. I'm like, have you... It, and, and to be fair, we've already spoken about the circumstances that Pulisic were, was in yesterday in the cameos like, that we've seen him do. It doesn't favour. Talking about Havertz and Mount's start to the season is uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable. I don't want to The do protection that. that some of these lads have is stupid. It's insane. John Terry didn't get this much protection. Lamps didn't get this much protection, but again, they probably didn't need it because they were actually competent. <laughs> they knew what they were doing week in, week out, and they were consistent. We hold place to that standard, and all of a sudden, it's a problem. Um, yeah, I, I, it's, it's baffling. But yeah, the fact that Pulisic got grilled in the way that he did, considering the fact that we know he probably shouldn't even be here now, is, is actually mad. To be you know fair, what? though, Eunice, Mount does lead the team in tackles. <laughs> Look, I, I, I'm going to make it clear. <laughs> a lot of people are gonna, probably going to start looking at this and think, oh, oh these guys are God. just bashing Mason Mount. We're not. We're not, right? No. It, it's not just about Mason Mount. It's about many different areas, not just individuals. Mm -hmm. One of the other individuals that we haven't talked about is Aspilicueta. Yeah. Aspilicueta oh, was getting ripped apart on that right side. Wrecked regularly but, but do you know what we we know this and when the new this. contract new. when the new contract comes out and everybody's doing kumbaya <laughs> our, our legend our starter our captain fantastico i'm sitting there thinking okay so that means we're not getting a new right back so that means if we switch to a four aspie starts and he may even be doing right wing back shifts but thankfully loftus cheek has turned up and started playing there so when someone stays that means an extra squad place is taken up. That means the manager sees them as important. Todd Bowie saw him as important. Yes, I understand. Introducing people, getting them new houses, you know, finding new schools, all of these things, making sure that they feel comfortable in their new surroundings, teaching them the Chelsea way, training, all these things. But if he has to touch the football pitch, he is a liability. And that is the sheer cold facts. And it's not, again, if anybody now starts to think that any Chelsea fan can have an agenda on Aspel Aquetta, then my goodness gracious, like, I, I really don't know where we're going with this. But he is past it. And we're seeing the decline. And to put him out there and expect him to not get dribbled past and not get out muscled, then we are just shooting ourselves in the foot. So I, I can't even really get into Aspie too much because Aspie shouldn't be here. He should be in Barcelona, which is where he wanted to be. And as much as you guys want to, you know, people want to convince themselves that, oh, Aspie really wanted to stay. Okay, maybe he did when he found out that Barcelona couldn't sign him. But at the start of the window, he wanted to go to Barcelona. And we should have made sure that that happened. Maybe they couldn't afford him or whatever. Maybe their, their own issues got in the way. But at the end of the day, he is going to be a liability. So it's, it's as simple as that. Unfortunately, I can only go for 10 more minutes because I have to launch a show on DR. I want to quickly bring some, some, some laughter to the panel. Neymar links. <laughs> There's been more... brother's got 13 goals and assists for PSG this season. He's got the best chance of his lifetime to win a Champions League with PSG. You think he's coming to Chelsea? I, I, you know what? Yesterday I saw the links and I was like, oh. And even this morning, like I There's see some. the Daily Mail have yep. spoken more on it, um, and saying that yeah, PSG are open to letting one of their stars leave. But after yesterday, I'm also I'm I'm quite tempted to you know probably if I could turn to Neymar and go, yo, don't stay stay where you are, man. You don't you don't want this. <laughs> you don't want this for your career. Bro. Uh, forget about us <laughs> wanting him. That's. Uh... A story so far away, it's not even funny. It's about Neymar actually wanting us. Don't get it twisted. It's not about, oh, Neymar, Chelsea don't want you. No, 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 no. Neymar don't want Chelsea. Don't do it. turn it around. 
Neymar is playing some of the most exquisite football in a back three, by the way, for PSG. And do you want to know who their midfielders are? I think it's uh, Verratti and um, Verratti, some yeah. other and some other brother. Um, forgot his name. Vitinha. Yes. Uh, they, they they don't have a Declan Rice there or a Ruben Neves. It's two engineers in midfield. Just to let you know, football can be played other ways. Mm. Can... I mean, a different different league as well. I mean, they're completely yeah, dominant. but league, but French they? league is not like it's not physical. Yeah, it's physical. Maybe not as physical as Premier League, but it's not it's not like. You just walk over over there, do you know what I mean? Like, bottom line, what I'm trying to say is that there are other ways of playing football. You, you know, just need you to know, perfect it. You know what's mad? Yesterday, I not just in terms of the, the Chelsea lads and everyone that are on the platform, but some of the others, some that have a neutral perspective. Because sometimes we can all be so deep within the box that sometimes you have to step outside the box and actually look at it from a, from, from, from a, from a neutral perspective, you know, see the overall situation. When I see some of the eyes that, of other fans that are commenting on how Chelsea were looking, not just yesterday, but this whole season. Um, common common theme. This, this Chelsea team, despite spending about one billion on defenders, don't have an identity. It looks disjointed. Um, body language is off. They don't look happy. Um, Tuchel looks like he can't find a solution. It's the same thing, especially when it comes to identity. It's almost like people actually can't figure out what Chelsea are trying to do. And when we go into detail and we see what we're, what the flaws are, because we know Chelsea inside out and we know more within than other than other neutral fans. But sometimes it's actually key to listen to what they're seeing because from them they've got no bias. And when you see, like, yeah, how, how, what are we actually trying to do? How are we actually trying to play? It's actually mad because as we go back to what we said at the beginning, what's the solution? I don't know what it is. I mean, with, with, with a day left in the window, <laughs> it's not looking good, bro. <laughs> no, it's not. It's looking fake. Right, I'm Luke, very, I'm very, it's, it's going to be a very long season. Um, we're not going to win the league. Um, <laughs> I, I, I can confirm I now. I can't believe you even said that. I can confirm now we're not going to win the league. Um, <laughs> but it's like... Much, much love to you, George. League. George Benson, shout out to you. We're not going to sign Neymar, Aubameyang and De Jong. Um, I saw your tweet. <laughs> oh, did he just tweet? No, it was, it was yesterday. Oh, <laughs> fair. Um, I wish I wish we did though sign De Jong and I don't know about Aubameyang anymore, but I wish we signed De Jong, man. No, I, I, would I would prefer somewhere. Zaha over Aubameyang, but Neymar, yeah, Zaha. Oh, Neymar, I would lose my shit for, and and this oh, goes yeah, against all of my pressing principles, of right? But Neymar is one of those players like Hazard where you just don't care about that because he's just that good on the football. I will negate for him, you know, oh, yeah. Mount and and Kukurea and you can all run around him and and look after him, right? He's that fucking good. Yeah. Um, and 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 people need to know that sometimes in football there are those players. They're they're very finite. Only a couple of them, but there are those players that you don't you don't care because he solves so many of he solves all of our attacking issues. Fuck it, all of them, every single one of them. He is literally that guy. He is the hazard, but it's yeah. not going to happen. Um, before we wrap up, West Ham, Skamaka, Paqueta, Cornet, Emerson, Palmieri with vengeance in his heart. Feeling confident. Declan Rice. I'm scared. I'm actually worried. Oh. It's like the bridge as well, isn't it? Unfortunately. And it's, 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 this is the thing. Our home this record is, is atrocious. This is Chelsea West Ham. Oh. I, I don't think, well, I'd oh. like to think everyone within the club and the team understands just how big this fixture actually is on a cultural level. Right on a uh, on a folklore level, <laughs> like Chelsea West Ham, West versus East. This goes back. We don't like each other, but I don't feel like the players are going to have that within them. West Ham will. West Ham will. They'll show up. And as I've said, we've seen this film before. We know what happens when there's certain things going on in the club, certain things in the dressing room. That isn't just tactical or just on the pitch or there was a, a, a mistake from this player or that player that cost us, that cost us. When there's problems that go way beyond that, mate, the last thing you want is an intense derby like that where you have to show up. 
you ain't got a choice to think about your mentality or anything like that. West Ham are going to come for it and I think they're going to smell blood. I'm concerned. I'd like to think that we bounce back. I'd like to think that we have the quality to beat West Ham. But right now, you said it earlier on, West Ham are kind of like where we are at the moment in terms of level. Mm. So... That, that's why I'm not worried. Because <laughs> because it's it's an even game, both are rubbish. So nil nil then, possibly possibly because both teams are pretty poor. So when two poor teams play together, it could either so be four four. So was Southampton. Do you know what? I I did the watch along for Southampton versus Man United. Southampton deserved something out of that. They did like, actually deserve something out of that. Yeah, they did. I know they're poor. But their biggest issue is they can't score up front. Funnily enough, they were able to score against us. Like yesterday. Um, <laughs> they actually created quite a few to put Man United away. They just they just couldn't. So I still think they're probably relegation battlers, but yeah. they're not poor for us. That's what I'm trying to say. Not poor for us. Mm. <sighs> well, this has been very therapeutic. Um Guys, make sure you subscribe to my man Eunice Talks Football. He'll be talking football. And there's Eunice. That's his name. Don't wear it out. <laughs> I love the way that his 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 people clamored in a certain comment section to defend him. I didn't need to. Twitter didn't Twitter did their job, you know. The comment section did their job. You know what I'm talking about, you know. Sometimes we make clips of of the goats and uh the farm box. Uh, you don't, you don't mess it, with units. Bro. Yeah, the, listen. You do not mess with units. You, listen. More I that didn't you can, have more to bat an eye. More that you can't believe. More that you <laughs> can't believe. All you did was get units, more subscribers, more love. Any, oh, I didn't know that guy. He fucking spits facts. Let me go subscribe to him. Um, so I don't need to even, you know what I mean? Just go subscribe to Eunice and go and subscribe to the other side of the coin. Go subscribe to Miz. Um, he's going to be watching a lot of other teams this season and watch alongs to even out the pain. And uh, mm. please let me know how Bayer Leverkusen are doing as well. I want to see if Hudson Odoi can, can recover. Can't wait. Yeah. Can't wait. More than you so, can believe. More, more than you can believe. believe. So we're going to wrap up. Um, <laughs> I'm about to be dismantled, destroyed, and decomposed by a big six panel. And uh, I look forward to that later on. Let so, us yeah. pray for my teeth. Yeah. In a bit, people. Peace. <laughs>